What's going on everyone? Hope you're all having a wonderful day today. In today's video, I'm gonna be demonstrating how to create on-scroll image animations using Next.js and also Frame in Motion. The first step of the video, I'm gonna show you a demonstration of how this is done using Figma with diagrams. And then from here, we're gonna jump directly into the project and I'm gonna build out and demonstrate how you can combine Frame in Motion with Next.js to create some really cool on-scroll image animations. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Great, so I've just opened up a mock-up of what the project is gonna look like. So you'll notice when you open up the Next.js file, we're gonna have a header here, which I have already created, as well as a footer. And between the two components, we have a gallery grid, which I have created for you. Within the gallery grid, we have a three by two um, desktop view. So we have three rows going horizontally and two columns going vertically like so. Inside each row, we have this blue rectangle here, which represents the area where the animations will be triggered once the mouse scrolls onto it. And within each section of the grid, we have one of these. So the image container controls what the animation will do. And inside of the container, we have a custom image uh, div, which will control what images we can use. And you can completely customize this however you like. But please keep in mind when we're doing the animations, it's the image container that will be responsible to create those effects. And coming over here, this is another really important diagram I want you guys to understand. So in this video, we're gonna be focusing on four different properties. The first property we'll be focusing on is the initial value. The initial value represents what the animation of the image will look like before the user scrolls onto the actual component. The second one is while in view. This represents what the animation will look like after the user gets into the actual component while scrolling down on the page. The third one is transition, which is responsible for how fast we want the animation to be done. And finally, viewport, which determines how often we want the animation to be made. Do we want it to be done once, multiple times, infinitely? Totally up to you. And I'll show you that right now. All right, so I've got VS Code open with my Next.js project. This file can be found in the description below and that will take you to the repository. So if you wanna follow along, more than welcome to do so. And you'll notice I have my header here, my gallery, and also my footer component, which I built. So if we go into the project to see how it looks, we've got the header, we've got the gallery, which contains all the different images, and finally the footer at the end. For this video, we're just gonna be manipulating the gallery. In order to come to the gallery, go into your components folder here, the gallery folder, and underneath here, we have a gallery.tsx file. This contains all the properties and where we'll be implementing frame of motion for this part of the video. So what we'll do now is come over to the terminal. We wanna create a new terminal and we want to install frame of motion to the project. In order to do that, you just type in npm install framer motion like so. And what will happen now is it will install the npm packages. Once that's done, we can now get right into it. So in order to import frame of motion over to our file, what you wanna do is type in import curly brackets motion from Framer Motion. This enables us and gives us the abilities to bring in Framer Motion's properties into our project. What we can do now is for each image container, we want to convert these into Framer Motion divs. In order to do this, it's really simple. All you do is come over to the div and type in motion.div. And what we'll do now is we'll apply it to the rest of the divs. So once you've done that, the next step is we want to start incorporating some of the frame of motion properties and see the power it has with creating awesome transition on scroll animations. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to be focusing on this first row here and we're just going to do a very basic opacity change just so you have an understanding of the powers in frame of motion. So before the user scrolls onto the actual region where the on scroll animation is fired, I want the initial value for the opacity to be set to zero. Once this is done, and once the user scrolls onto the region, while in view, I want the opacity to be changed to one. What this essentially means, it will go from zero to one once the user enters the region. And in order to control how fast we want the change to be made, 
We can set a duration of something like 0 0.5 seconds. We can also set a delay. I'm just going to put zero. And we can also set the ease to ease out like so. Once you've set these properties, you have now created your very first frame of motion animation on scroll effect. So if we go into our file here, refresh the page, and you'll notice as I scroll down, the animation occurs and that looks pretty cool. You may notice that the fire might happen too soon for you. There's a way to manipulate this and that's by controlling the delay variable here. What this does is it allows us to give a threshold and buffer time before the duration takes place. In fact, you can make it as long as you want. I'm going to change it to three seconds. And if we refresh the page, it takes a lot longer. And this time it's taking much longer and it finally appears. And that's how the delay property works. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply these same properties. I'm just going to bring it back to 0.75 copy these exact same ones and bring it to our second image here. And let's see how that looks. So if I refresh the page, scroll down, and there we go, we have this opacity change. Although I'm not really a fan of the fact that they both appear at the same time, there's a really cool way to manipulate this and that's by literally just changing the variables in the delay property here. Let's say for example, you want this one to appear before this one, we can change it to something like 0 0.5 seconds. And maybe for this one, we can keep it at 0 0.75 seconds. So if we go back and if we refresh the page and scroll down, you'll notice this image appears first and then this one, and that's looking fantastic. So that's just a basic understanding of how frame of motion works. Really cool thing about frame of motion is you don't have to just do opacity changes. You can also do transitional changes in the X or Y direction. So we're going to do that right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to apply um, the properties to these two images here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy these values here, come over to this div here, underneath here, paste this. And instead of setting the opacity, I'm going to do something like setting the X value to something like 100 as the initial state. And once the user scrolls to it, I want to set it to zero. If I save that, go back into here. And if I refresh the page, scroll down. So we have our first one. Let's see how this looks. There we go. We have this transition occurring. Um, it's occurring a bit slow, so I might change this to 0 0.25 seconds. And perhaps let's do negative 100 instead and see how that looks. So if I refresh the page, once the user scrolls into the region, you'll notice it moves like that. That's pretty cool. And what I'll do now is I'll copy this exact, these properties over to the next div. And instead of making the X to negative 100, we could do something like 100. And let's give it a bit of a delay so they both stagger. Let's change this to something like 0 0.5 seconds. So if we refresh the page, that's how it looks. That's pretty cool. So if we go from the very top, let's see how this is looking. Got our first one, got our second one, and that's looking really cool. So you don't just have to do X values, but you can also do Y. So let's give this a Y value of something like 50 and let's set the Y back to zero. Let's do the exact same thing for the other image. Let's say, I don't know, 100 and the Y value back to zero. What I might do is I might change the delay slightly. So 0 0.75 seconds and 0 0.5 seconds. Save that. So now if we refresh the page, scroll down, we get our first opacity one. We've got our cool, smooth transitional changes. For our final one, we're going to combine the opacity changes as well as the transitional changes and see how that looks. So again, I'm going to copy um, the values that we had up here. So I'm just going to copy this, scroll down here, I'm going to paste these values in. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put some um, X prop, some changes in the X value. So I don't know. Let's do negative 100 again. And let's do that same thing and set it to zero. Let's copy this exact same thing. Come down to here, paste that. Let's change the delay to something like, I don't know, 0 0.75 seconds. Save that. And let's see how that looks. So we have our, so if I refresh the page, we have our first one, which is just doing an opacity change. Our second one doing a transitional change. Now, third one doing a mixture of the two with opacity and transitional ones. So that's looking really, really cool.
You may be wondering, as we scroll back up the page, the animation keeps continuing infinitely. There's a way around this, and that's by using the viewport property from Frame of Motion. This way, we can determine how often we want the animation to occur. So we're going to do that right now. In this case, we currently have it as infinite as the default. And the way to change that is if we go back into our images here, what we can actually do is set the viewport equals double curly brackets once colon with a Boolean value of true. What this essentially means is once the user scrolls into the image container region, we want the viewport and the animations to apply only once, not multiple times when the user comes back to the region. So what I'll do now is I will apply this to our second one and let's test it out and see how it works. So if I scroll to the very top, I'm gonna to refresh the page. You will notice, yes, we have our first animation here with the opacity changes, our transitional changes, a mixture of the two. And as we scroll up, you'll notice the transition continues. However, if we come to our first one when we change the viewport to once, as shown here, that stays the exact same, no matter how often you enter the region again, as opposed to the other ones, which will continue animating without stopping. So the viewport's a great way to control how often you want the animations to occur and definitely something you should consider when building out your websites. So that concludes the end of the video. I hope you guys learned something about Frame of Motion as well as Next.js. Um, if you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I do post quite frequently and I do have a whole bunch of playlists about front-end development or UI design if you are interested in upskilling in those areas. So yeah, without further ado, hope you enjoyed it and I will catch you in the next one. See you later. Thank you.